Hey everyone, it's Janae with Daily Dental Hygiene and today I'm excited to share with you that I actually have videos of me scaling the whole mouth, what instruments I use, how I angle, how I retract, how I suction, everything. This is awesome. Uh, the person featured in my video is my sister, Bree. Full disclosure, she does not floss. This is an ongoing battle of our entire life. So you will see bleeding in the video. And that is just a forewarning because my sister does not like to floss. So let's begin the video. I want to start off by saying the first instrument that I'm going to be using, it's called the SN135XE2. I use an extended sickle that is amazing at getting distal molars. It's really sharp. It gets into the contacts really easily. And this is by Hugh Freedy. This is the new Harmony handle. It's an ergonomic handle that just came out. So let's get started. As you can see, I'm starting off on the distal buckle of number two. So what I do is I go vertical. I do the oblique strokes. I do horizontal. I go into the contacts. You'll notice I'm always getting the distal line angles. That is the number one place missed with most scaling. They are very good at getting in between. They are very good at getting the facials but make sure that you're getting the distal buckle. There is a concavity on the first premolar. Make sure that you really roll into that area. You'll notice I spend extra time really getting premolars. I find premolars are the number one missed teeth, especially the lower, the lower premolars. Those are missed all the time. So now I'm going to suction because she's bleeding a little. And then it helps me to also be able to continue to see where I'm scaling. Now you'll notice I'm blowing air. Blowing air is my favorite technique. This is how we check for tartar calculus left over. Um, you'll see a chalky whiteness if you blow air. And then I'm coming in here just basically with um, a universal, like a anterior universal Um going straight in. You'll notice in this video though, every different instrument is banded. So now this band I'm using has a purple band on it. I just put different bands on myself, but I just put these different colored bands on for the video. So I'm now going back in with my extended sickle. I'm getting the distal of number 15. I retract. You can see I'm fulcruming on the external of her mouth. I'm getting into that distal. This area is missed all the time, but see how I can see it easily just by retracting. And I use a double-sided mirror. I really like the double-sided mirror by Hugh Freedy. It is awesome. You can retract for probing, especially like probing on the buckle of the upper left. Amazing. So I'm coming in. I go over my strokes a lot. You'll notice that I'm always going over my strokes and going into the contacts. So oblique strokes, facial going around. So I usually start at the distal and then I work my way up to the midline. That's usually easiest for me. I do a lot of exploratory strokes. Like I kind of lightly feel and then when I feel a click or anything, I kind of go over it really good. Um, and then I always scale after I cavitron. So I've already cavitroned her whole mouth. Cavitroning removes about, I believe, about 90% of all the buildup. Scaling is mostly just to get interproximal better. Now I'm blowing air again. I'm checking that there's no buildup. The number one place that you're going to find buildup is on the upper back molars. That's where our parotid gland is. And we're going to find it on the lower anterior teeth where our lingual salivary glands are. Those are the number one areas you're going to see buildup on the facial surface and lingual surface. So now I'm coming in. I'm sitting at about 11 o'clock. I'm fulcruming on the outer cheek. And I'm just rolling into the contacts. And like I said, this is after cavitroning. So I'm 
I, this is, I'm very thorough. I go over and rescale every part of the mouth. I overstroke all my strokes, triple, triple checking. I blow air. Um, that's really honestly the only way I think as a clinician you should really even be doing dentistry is if you are using multiple methods of checking yourself, cavitroning, scaling, blowing air, exploratory strokes, flossing at the end is another way to check the contacts, make sure you got everything out. And then as I scale, I move from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And then I end up when I'm scaling the upper right linguals, I usually kind of parallel it. So I go from like 11, then I go to 12, and then I move back to like 10 o'clock to get into those areas. Now you'll see, I know you'll notice I switched to a Nevi. This is, I have that blue sticker on my, um, on my instrument. The Nevi is my, one of my favorite instruments, the extended sickle and the Nevi are the main instruments I always use. This is really good at getting the upper right linguals. I like that's the, the where I use my Nevi is the lower anterior teeth and the linguals of the upper right. This is, the Nevi is just, I'm right there. I don't need the extended shank. It's a lot harder to use the extended sickle to get the linguals of the upper right. The Nevi is smaller. It's more controlled. It's a lot easier. You'll notice you'll have better control of the instrument if you switch to a Nevi during this part. Um, you'll notice right here there's a lot of bleeding. That's because there is a big click of buildup and tartar. Um and you can hear my sister laugh. Well, she was laughing before because she um, could feel the click. And she was like, what's that? And it's like, yeah, it's the buildup. You should floss. All right, now I'm going in. This is a universal curette. It is not a sickle. You'll notice there's a green sticker on it now. This is an extended curette. I love this on the linguals of the lower anterior teeth. This is so good, especially like where there's all that plaque and that, I call it placculus, that placculus right around the linguals. I'm getting on that distal angle really good, back and forth. You'll notice I scrape around, I scrape down. I could just I go over my strokes a lot. It's really important. I let the patient close. I let them take a second to breathe. I try not to just like powerhouse through the whole thing. I try to give them like a second to like breathe. I'm fulcruming on the premolars here. You can see I'm fulcruming on the premolars. I have very, very, very like long fingers. I have big hands for the most part. I wear like a medium to large glove. So I do a lot of extra oral fulcruming. You can see I'm retracting her tongue out of the way with the mirror. Now I'm going back in with my extended sickle. This is the pink band. This is really good for the lower anterior buckles. I like the curette for the linguals, and I like the sickle for the buckles. The tissue is a little bit tighter on the buckles than the linguals, so I think the sickle gets interproximal a lot better. She's bleeding, so I'm just suctioning the blood so that I can kind of continue to work and see the area, especially for the video. I'm trying to, like, keep it dry so you guys can see it. So I'm retracting with my mirror, not super hard, but just keeping a light pressure. I'm fulcruming on her lip slash chin slash teeth. I do a lot of backhand fulcruming. So, like, the, the, the nail bed of my fingers is usually, like, my fulcrum. So now I'm coming in, I'm getting up into the contact. You'll notice as I roll into the contact, I actually put my instrument down and kind of flat against the contact. That's how you get up into that contact area. So now that I still have my sickle, I'm gonna go to the other side. Going around the distal, working my way in, fulcruming now on the chin with basically like my fingertips. And then I am 
just retracting. You could use your finger. You don't have to use the mirror. You can use your finger. So a fulcruming on the chin and lip, working my way around, going up into the contact. Here's another thing. So right now I'm coming from nine o'clock, but if you want to scale like the buckle area of the lower right molars, come from one o'clock. This is way easier than like having to like angle your wrist. It's honestly, if you're right-handed, it's way more ergonomically comfortable to scale the buckles, especially the premolars. Like you can clean the premolars really good from one o'clock. And now I'm going in and getting the lingual of the um, lower right molars. So 30, 31, I'm going to stay at 1 o'clock. I'm using my double-sided mirror to retract the tongue, moving that away, and now I'm getting into those areas from 1 o'clock. Now I'm using my fulcrum fingers on the buckled cheek. And I'm getting into these areas. Now I'm probably going to, let's see, yeah, I'm going to switch back to my Nevi after this because the Nevi is what I use to get tight contacts, super, t super, super tight contacts that get a lot of interproximal buildup. The Nevi is really sharp. It's a thinner instrument to really get in there. So now I am going to blow air. I'm going to check that I got everything after cavitroning. And now I'm going to be able to see where on the lower anterior teeth I need to get. So blowing the air is going to be a really good way to see like the chalkiness of the teeth. So now I'm sitting, right now I'm sitting at 12 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sitting at 9 o'clock. And then I'm working my way to 12 o'clock. And from 12 o'clock, I can really use, I use indirect vision right here. And I'm just getting the straights of the teeth. So I work on the straights. And then I go interproximal. So now I'm getting distals. Um, on this area, I definitely want to make sure that you know that the, f the lingual aspect of this area is what gets a lot of buildup. So in a proximal, yes, but you'll notice that when you blow air, the number one place that you miss when cavitroning is the straight. So you'll notice I'm just kind of coming up into the contacts, but I'm really like getting the actual super part of the tooth really good. There's like a sheet of calculus that builds up on everyone's teeth on these areas. And usually when we cavitron, we really cavitron like the gum line area the most. So now I'm still sitting from 12 o'clock. I'm just getting the straight of the tooth and now I'm coming in interproximal. So left and right bouncing, left and right. You'll notice I drop my hand down and the point of the sickle, I actually see how I'm going like flat with it. That's how you get up into those contacts. You ever had it where you take your instrument and you're scaling the lower anterior teeth and it gets like stuck and you're like, oh crap. This helps avoid that, but it helps to get that little aspect of like the interproximal down a lot better. That's where calculus hides. It, it, it hides right underneath the contact supra on these areas. So now I'm blowing air again. So it's basically a dance of... Blowing air, scaling, blowing air, scaling. You don't need to scale just to scale. That's how you notch out the teeth, and that's how you cause actual problems and damage to the enamel. So blow air. If there's nothing there, there's nothing there. Move on. All right, so now I'm coming in from like about 8 o'clock. And now I'm scaling um, like the distal areas a little bit better. A 
also use your nevi to get into the interproximal area of the premolars. The lower premolars on every mouth is what I find has the most buildup. Like 28, 29, 20, 21, most buildup in the mouth. When you look at x-rays, the area you're going to see the most spicules is always the lower premolars. And it's missed a lot of times. We do a really good job, 22 to 27. And then we get those back molars because that's where buildup is. But the premolars have always the most buildup. So use your sickle to get in between the premolars really good. They're very rounded teeth, so it's easy to miss the line angles too. So go over those really good. Blow air really good on those. So now I'm just blowing air, keeping everything dry. Rinsing out first and then just going through and kind of drying out, seeing everything. You'll notice when I'm spraying, I spray on the occlusals. That's kind of like the easiest way not to have it spray all over you. All right.